Peace talks to try and end that two-year conflict in Ethiopia's Tigray region are now at risk with the recent escalation in fighting uh, to the north of the country between the federal forces and those under the banner of the Tigray People's Liberation Front. To tell us a little bit more about the political situation in Ethiopia, I caught up with Ethiopia's ambassador to South Africa, Dr. Mukta Kadir. Ambassador Mukta Kadir, the Ethiopian ambassador to South Africa, thank you very much indeed for joining us and welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Peter, for having me. Thank you for giving us time to understand the situation in your country. Let's begin with this resumption of fighting between federal forces and Tigrayan forces uh, after something like a five-month truce. What started the fighting again? Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, let me start by giving you some background about uh, the peace process and the uh, reigniting of this conflict. The Ethiopian government has uh, demonstrated its commitment to peace and the peaceful resolution of the conflict in Tigray, not just by words, but by concrete confidence, confidence building measures it has been taking. For, for instance, Peter, it, it, the government has released top uh, TPLF officials from prison. It has declared uh, unilateral humanitarian truth. It has facilitated unfettered access for humanitarian aid to reach the people in Tigray. Uh, it also just exerting utmost efforts to cooperate with the high representative of the AU for the Horn of Africa, His Excellency, Lucien uh, Basanjo, in his effort to mediate between uh, uh, the uh, federal government and the TPLF. It has also established a high-level peace committee led by his Excellency, Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Demeka Mokonen, um, to resolve this uh, conflict uh, peacefully. And this committee made clear right away that uh, the government is committed to, to engage itself in the negotiation without any precondition, anywhere, anytime under the facilitation of the AU. So all these practical steps are testaments for the government, for uh, government's commitment to resolve this um, uh, conflict, in pursuing a peaceful path. So the, 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 the reigniting of this uh, uh, conflict you can see that TPLF, on the other hand, was downplaying the peace effort and the failure to reciprocate the confidence building measures that was taken by the government and declined to just openly list and declare uh, the negotiating team from its side and keep really uh, disseminating uh, fabricated lies that are targeted to frustrate the peace processes. And as you heard, um, uh, it, 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 it just ended up looting the, uh, the fuel of the WFP uh, to just use it for military purposes, to transport its military uh, the, the, the fuel which is exclusively destined for humanitarian purpose. Yes, but fighting did resume though, didn't it? And um, what's happened is that there have been airstrikes, Ethiopian forces um, striking Mekele, and we believe that children playing on a playground were killed. Was that necessary? Uh, when the... TPLF uh, end up launching a full a full scale attack and invasion in the neighboring regions Afar and Amhara, and keeps looting, killing civilians, 
and looting their property and destroying social infrastructures. The government is left with no option except defending the sovereignty and in, uh, uh, territorial integrity of the country and the safety of the people. So in, in, in carrying out its uh, military responsibilities, the Ethiopian Defense Force is known for its professionalism back home and overseas, you know, it is known for its uh, uh, excellent discharge of its responsibility in peacekeeping missions. So it's, it is a, a, a military known for its uh, professionalism and uh, it's uh, the, air, the Ethiopian Air Force's attack is confined only to military capabilities and the military installations of the TPLF, not the civilians. That is why the Ethiopian Defense Force proudly gave a notice to people to distance themselves from the locations where the military installations are situated in the Tigray region. All right. Uh, so, so you're saying is that those that were caught up, uh, the children that were killed, could have gotten out. You would have warned them they didn't get out, and you carried on with the strikes anyway. No, uh, uh, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, by the way, this time in Ethiopian educational system, schools are at annual vacation. They are closed. There is no school at right at this moment. And the Ethiopian military force, especially the Air Force, while undertaking its uh, military duties, is led by uh, uh, high professionalism. It never targets the uh, civilians. So the reports I also heard, so that those reports from some uh, international media outlets and some agencies is simply an echo of the baseless accusations of the TPLF. This conflict uh, has been running for uh, two years now, and uh, millions of people have been displaced. Uh, many, many hundreds of thousands are facing starvation at this time. Um, there was talk that you would come together and resolve this uh, over peace talks. What has been holding that back? You say that you want to uh, negotiate without any preconditions. The Tigrayans are saying that they need the uh, pre-conflict borders recognized, and they'd prefer Kenya to mediate. Is that too much for them to ask? Uh, regarding the peace uh, process, the negotiation uh, process, uh, it's uh, it's clear beyond any grain of doubt from Ethiopian government side that there is the full commitment to go for and peacefully resolve this conflict. Uh, under the umbrella of the uh, AU. So, so far as AU is in charge of facilitation of this negotiation, the Ethiopian government doesn't have uh, a problem under, under the current AU high representative is in charge, he's doing um, the, a wonderful job in this regards. So strengthening that team by other African brothers and sisters is not a problem for Ethiopian government, so far as it is under the umbrella of uh, the AU and uh, the high representatives of the Horn of Africa. This conflict seems to be going just beyond the federal forces and uh, the Tigrayan uh, forces. We're seeing Amhara, uh, Afar, uh, even the Oromia involved, and even uh, uh, Eritrean uh, forces. Uh, why has this taken on a wider regional uh, uh, tone? No, I don't have any evidence, Peter, for uh, uh, Eritrean or Oromia uh, to be involved in this uh, 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 conflict. 
the fact on the ground is the TPLF launched a full-scale attack and the invasion uh, against the neighboring Afar and Amhara and keep looting their property, killing the people massively. So the, for the international community, it's really the time to just stop uh, uh, just making a very uh, blanket statement and uh, taking uh, making soft stance that emboldens the belligerence of the TPLF. So it's clear to know who started this uh, and reignited this conflict. It shouldn't be uh, rocket science. It what all it takes is just to have a rational mind and the courage to tell the truth. The patterns over the last six months shows the conduct of both parties from the government side, extreme commitment for peace and peace talks and cooperation with AU. And just, it's not, it's not like, uh, a lip service. It's it's a real commitment from the Ethiopian government side, because peace is in the interest of the Ethiopian people. We know, we know it. So that is why the Ethiopian government is committed for peace and the peaceful resolution of this conflict. Even now, as the Ethiopian government has uh, committed itself for defending the sovereignty and the territorial integrity of the country. In the meantime, it is still, its door is still open for peace and the peaceful talks. So for, for the, I think the international com uh, community should really uh, just uh, put uh, enough pressure on the TPLF to come to negotiating table. So for the international community, it is really uh, time because since they just reignited this uh, this conflict, Peter, they are destroying uh, around Kopo, you might have heard. They just using these uh, uh, human wave tactics. They are causing an imaginable loss of life. They are targeting civilians, not military targets. They are destroying churches, mosques, and other uh, social infrastructures. So the, the international community, yes, uh, many in the, national, in, the in the international community rightly condemn uh, TPLF's theft of the WFP's uh, fuel, however, the international community remained silent when it comes to the TPLF's aggression and the belligerence. Also, international community failed to hold TPLF accountable for breaching the humanitarian truce and reigniting the conflict. So uh, for Ethiopia, uh, as Ethiopia, uh, we appeal to the international community to step making really blanket statements taking soft, soft stance, uh, which really is in effect emboldening the TPLF's belligerence and furthering the sufferings, sufferings of our people. So it is time for really the international community to call a spade a spade. Talking about the uh, international community, the uh, Director General of the WHO, uh, Dr. Gebreses, uh, said that he has relatives uh, in the Tigray region, but he's unable to reach them. He said that uh, he can't contact them. He doesn't even know if they're dead or alive. Let's take a listen. I will tell you my own story. I have many relatives there. I want to send them money. I cannot send them money. They're starving, I know. I cannot help them. I cannot help them. I can help them. I can share from what I have. I cannot do that because they are completely sealed off. I want to speak to them. It's a long time since I have spoken to them. I can't speak to them. 
I don't know even who is dead or who is alive. Ambassador, why is it difficult for people to reach their relatives uh, inside Tigray? It seems as if they are sealed off, according to the WHO Director General. First of, first of all, really, we respect WHO and uh, uh, the chief person's office as a body, but really, let's we have the world should give attention to the way he is using the office. He is using a building the office to pursue his parochial political interest. Being as a background, he is member of the executive committee of the TPL, the terrorist TPL, that is launching an attack against peace-loving Ethiopia. So whatever he claims is simply he is serving as a spokesperson of the TPL. But don't take me wrong. I agree and I see that people in the our people in Tigray region are suffering for the mistakes they have never committed. But the TPLF, the, the, the cause is the TPLF that is taking hostage the Tigray people to make the Tigray people not be able to receive those facilities, those basic services from the Ethiopian government. Ethiopian gov government, even during this negotiation, has made clear that it has made his its, its agencies in Addis to make themselves ready to reinstate the, the and and uh, uh, resume the necessary uh, basic services for the Tigray people, provided that enabling conditions are facilitated on the ground. It is sad that the uh, kind of problem they are suffering, lack of those services. Yes, it hurts. Yes, we understand. Where, yes, we understand the pain of the Tigray people, but the cause is the TPLF. So they have to unite against the TPLF. Uh, Peter, I have to just uh, remind uh, you that this terrorist group, TPLF, was in charge of the country, just in charge of the economy, in charge of the whole resource of the nation. By virtue of its control of the resource, it has just making friends here and there in different parts of um, Western media outlets, some of them, of course, and some international agencies. Using those, those clicks, it is just always placed, it attacks, it commits atrocities, and it is known for its tradition of playing the victim and the blame, shift, blame shifting. So where does the country grow from here? Go from here. Um, fighting has resumed. Um, both sides are blaming each other for the escalation. Meanwhile, a humanitarian crisis continues to unfold and a resolution must be found. What can the international community do? The African Union, you say, is trying its best. Uh, but I don't know if they've managed to make significant progress if we're seeing this fighting. Uh, solution for uh, this conflict finally will be and should be peaceful negotiation and coming to an agreement so that this chapter of conflict ends. Toward this this, this peaceful so solution, I think the AU is the pertinent, relevant body that should be mandated to mediate between the government and the TPLF. Ethiopia strongly believes in African solutions for African problems. We need to have uh, the, the trust and confidence in our own African institutions. So the AU is capable, it, 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 it showed, it demonstrated some progress even in the, in the, in the past, helping mediating between the two uh, parties. So uh, it, is, it is time even for the international community to help, to support the AU 
rather than trying to replace it, rather than trying to uh, discourage the AU from uh, really undertaking what it is uh, doing now. Your Excellency, thank you very, very much indeed uh, for giving us your time uh, to help us understand the uh, situation in your country. Uh, thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you, Peter, for having me. It's really a great pleasure to be with you this afternoon.